this guy in the toga is Pythagoras, famed ancient Greek mathematician known for his theorem regarding triangles. That the sum of the square of the two legs will equal the square of the hypotenuse. To put it more simply, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is such a powerful mathematical idea that it is still taught today in schools across the world. This raises the question, what about higher exponents? a to the third plus b to the third equals c to the third. What about the fourth or the fifth? Do these have whole number solutions as the familiar Pythagorean theorem does? This is Pierre de Fermat, judge by day or mathematician by night. In the margins of his copy of Diophantus' Arithmetica, he addresses these questions. Indeed, he claimed that there were no whole number solutions, not only to a to the third plus b to the third equals c to the third, but for all higher exponents, four, five, six, on up. Fermat claimed that the proof of his statement that there were no whole number solutions to these equations was too vast, too grand to fit in the margins of his book. And then Pierre de Fermat passed away. This idea that a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n has no whole number solutions has come to be known as Fermat's last theorem. Fermat was noted for scribbling theorems into the margins, saying, I cannot give a proof of this theorem though I have it, because I have to wash my hair, or do the laundry. And over the centuries since his passing, mathematicians had found solutions to each and every theorem, save that one, that there are no whole number solutions to a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n. This is why it is known as Fermat's last theorem. The man who centuries ago dared to broach this question, who had jotted in the margins that he had a grand and simple proof of this idea, but died before he could share it. That proof, that simple, brilliant proof that he claimed that he had was lost to time. And over the centuries had not been discovered again. That is, of course, until a ten-year-old boy in Cambridge Library came across a book about Fermat's last theorem and made proving this theorem his life's work. That boy grew up to be this man, Andrew Wiles, who in 1993, after 430 years, finally proved Fermat correct, putting an end 
to one of the greatest unsolved problems in mathematics. A problem so seemingly simple and devilishly complex that it took the greatest minds in the human species four centuries to crack. This is the history of Fermat's last theorem. The history, one of the greatest unsolved mysteries that mathematics had to offer. I appreciate your time. Remember to like and subscribe. And have a good day.